Hello, everyone. We'll start shortly as soon as the room fills in. We have a large number in attendance today, so this will take just a moment. Hello everyone, my name is Robert Stuckey, the Irrigation Association's Education Manager. I'm pleased to welcome you to our first Manufacturer Series webinar of 2023. Today's webinar titled, The Smart Irrigation Solution for Landscape Managers, Increased Profits, Efficiency, and Customer Retention with WeatherTrack is sponsored by HydroPoint Data Systems. HydroPoint is the proven leader in smart water management solutions, its weather track baseline and water compass product lines help companies maximize water savings, reduce operating costs, minimize business risks, and achieve sustainability goals. An EPA WaterSense Partner of the Year, HydroPoint combines IoT technology, data analytics, and automation to optimize irrigation flow management and leak detection. Its solutions deliver visibility and control to commercial, government, education, and community sites. To learn more about these award-winning technologies, please visit their website at hydropoint.com. Before we start the presentation, I would like everyone to know that this session is being recorded and that all attending microphones will be muted. This particular webinar is worth one CEU. By navigating to the certification tab on the IA's website and locating the submit CEUs option, you can easily record your credits earned. For those of you who are unfamiliar with our web address, it is irrigation.org. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat box. The presenters will do their best to answer them at several points during the presentation. Our speakers today are Ben Kofi and Danny Smith. After graduating from the University of Northern Colorado in 1999, Ben started working with Rather Track in 2004 when he was still an irrigation tech in Denver, Colorado. In 2006, he began working for HydroPoint as a weather track product specialist and began training other contractors and irrigation nerds how to be successful using the weather track system. In 2012, Ben began as the HydroPoint training manager and oversees all forms of customer training, including live training events, on demand training content for YouTube, and learn up upon, as well as weekly training webinars. Danny is a dedicated water management professional with extensive experience in irrigation design and management with an extreme passion for water conservation. Prior to becoming the director of water management at Park West Companies, he served as their single irrigation specialist and proactively grew their water management department to a dedicated and highly certified staff of 10. Danny is a former member of the Irrigation Association's Technical Program Committee and currently serves as the vice chair on the awards and honors committee. He has earned several certifications, including the CLIA, CIC, CLWM, as well as the QUEL and RWSS certifications from other industry partners. Without further ado, I'd like to give these gentlemen the floor. Good Thank morning, everyone. <clears throat> what a great introduction. Thank you so much. Um, my, my name is Ben Coffey. I'm the National Training Manager, and I will uh, be a Involved in today's discussion, I am honored to be here and represent HydroPoint for the IEA. Um, I have been an IEA guy for a long time. I have not missed an IEA show, even through COVID, for probably the last, uh, I think now, 14 shows in a row. So it is great to spend time getting to know you guys and, and to uh, see everyone here. Thanks for making time to see us this morning. Danny? Yeah, good morning, uh, unless you're East Coast. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for coming in. Uh, registration looked pretty darn impressive, over 100 uh, active persons. And uh, yeah, looking forward to getting this started. Awesome. So I am going to uh, steal your screen for a second, and we will get this party started. Let's see. Um, share my screen. Share this and get this one going. <clears throat> we are here today to talk about 
uh, smart irrigation solutions and how adding smart irrigation to a site will increase profitability. There are so many value propositions that smart irrigation provides. Uh, we like at, with WeatherTrack, we like to think that we give water managers the tools that they need to eliminate waste uh, and bring those water bills to exactly what your site needs. Um, make sure that the plants stay healthy and everything is well watered, but we eliminate any waste from uh, bad scheduling or from infrastructure failure that can cost you valuable time and gallons. And really what we are gonna focus on today is that time element. The ways that adding smart irrigation makes the response to any irrigation issue, either scheduling or hardware, uh, more efficient, making management for these sites easier and making our contractors more profitable by using the advanced technology. Danny, anything to build on that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was very interesting for me coming from the field, uh, seeing the byproducts of, of what, what we're mentioning here today. So the profitability, the efficiencies. Uh, I, I ultimately started uh, looking at smart controllers as that's what was available. That's the right thing to do. So uh, replacing a offline you know, XYZ controller to a new smart controller uh, seemed like the right thing to do. I can get a rebate on it. So we kind of started off with, with that mentality. And then as, as we move forward, as we got more quantities, as I started to move up through the company, I started looking at the, uh, the overhead, the cost of business, the profitability, uh, extras, uh, and so forth. And, and that's, uh, that's where a lot of these things started to really come into play. And uh, one thing I'd like to hear from you is uh, you have a very wide variety of smart controllers out on site. Mm -hmm. uh, WeatherTrack is honored to be a part of that portfolio. Um, but what, when I came on, when I got turned on to smart controllers, it was very, very early on. Uh, I, I adopted WeatherTrack when it was still using medical paging to communicate. Back nice. To yes. Yeah. One way. Yeah. Yeah. And the efficiency that I experienced, uh, was the programming efficiency. Like mm -hmm. you have all of the certifications. Uh, that take you through the classes and walk you through all of the elements that need to be considered when calculating a proper irrigation schedule. And I think uh, when I was a contractor, the, the largest efficiency that I saw is mm -hmm. not having to go through the process and do the math. I don't have to understand all of the science and everything that goes into it, right? I, I think of uh, if I try to quantify recalculating every station on every controller that I manage on every day, right? Uh, to get the exact right amount of water down for every plant. Mm -hmm. It is mind blowing to think of how long that would take on a professional route. How, right, how many, right. almost impossible, right? Really, I did it once a week and I felt like I was in charge uh, well, and doing the right thing. And then when I had it, a smart controller onto my site, uh, I risk, I without the mm -hmm. weekly chore of reprogramming those controllers, we saved more than 30% of our annual irrigation water consumption. Well, well, kudos to you if you were actually doing the math. If you were looking at your precip rates, your, your, you know, um, your ET in the area, your, your, your soil types, if you were actually going down that road back then even, that's, that's more, more than impressive. Uh, I got into this industry where I saw a PGP and that's 16 minutes. I saw an NPR nozzle, that's seven minutes. And, and that's just, that's just where we started. And, you know, you fine tune things, you make them, you make them work. But, you know, back in the day, we weren't looking at runtime, you know, schedules that the architect put together and goes, well, that's, that's what I'm going to follow. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, five minutes is not enough. Seven minutes is too much. Let's try six and see what happens. And so taking the, the, the science there and, and making it easy by plugging in all these attributes and spitting out that math especially in the volume in which we're, we're trying to operate. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I take too much credit. What you described is a step farther than I did. Like I, I took very basic assumptions and, and built them in. Right. But I was recalculating it and trying to, trying to do the best that I could uh, to calculate that landscape irrigation requirement, but even once a week and, and changing that once a week was, a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think 
the, the beginning efficiency. We'll talk about a lot of different things. But when we talk about smart controllers, that weather-based element uh, should not just be dismissed, in my opinion. Totally. Yeah. I mean, like you said, coming out there once a week, if we're lucky, but we have temperature swings, we have weather changes that that dictate more than that. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to get into it, but truck rolls, you know, is, is the big piece. How often can I go over and high five, you know, a thousand controllers, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's labor at the end of the day, it's, it's human capital that we have to pay attention to. Time is money, right? Time is money. Absolutely. So let's, let's just go there first. You said we would get there and all and right. the conversation brought us there. So uh, can you give me a, an example or two of how using smart controllers uh, gives you the visibility and the the advantage of uh, to be able to reduce truck rolls? Yeah, I mean, so we have to look at what what is a truck roll? Why, why do I need to send an irrigation tech out, out to that particular property? Uh, right now, I'm, I'm a, right around 100 irrigation techs. So I got 100 vehicles on the road uh, at any given time. And it could be going out there to check on a work order, doing a PMI. Um, it could be anything, uh, you know, just really just checking on the property, doing a drive through, if you will. And if I can stop one of those from happening once per week, twice per week, if I can have any type of remote access into that property and not have to have a, a human having to get into his vehicle, his or her vehicle, uh, drive all the way out there possibly get into a car accident, increase the mileage where my insurance premiums go up. Uh, all, all of that just equates to, to raw profit for us. And so it's very important that we we execute, we do what we need to do. We do what we say we're going to do in these maintenance contracts and, and, and deliver. You know, at the end of the day, we have to deliver. Uh, but if we can do that using tools uh, and, and gain efficiencies on our end that we can capture, that, that's, uh, that's good business. Absolutely. And since we're on that subject, one of my great customers, uh, the Davis County School District in Utah, actually studied this. They, um, when they deployed smart controllers to all of their sites, they, because they're a school district, they have a very small world that they keep sure. very close track of. And they had always tracked how many truck rolls happens uh, across the season, how many truck rolls per site, sure. and put a dollar amount for the time and gas and all of that. They said, for every truck roll, uh, we're gonna count that as $100 of our budget to go out, which is is loose. I've heard other numbers that exceed, uh, I've heard both sides of that, but sure. $100 is a nice round number. And then after their deployment of smart controllers, they compare the number of truck rolls before and the number of truck rolls after, and it turned out that they saved more than $40,000 in truck rolls by wow. using the advantage of those smart controllers. So when you hear uh, the school district talk, they say it was like adding a full-time employee. And the way that they say that is because that $40,000 is their starting salary for a full-time employee. Wow, so, wow. Um, they're talking about making simple changes. If you get new water restrictions, right? Mm -hmm. You can go mm -hmm. in and without dispatching to the site, you can make those changes uh, quickly and easily using those smart controllers. Yeah, and I'd love to see how they calculated that 40,000. You know, I mean, it's not just the fuel in the truck, um, but that's that's the low-hanging fruit, right? Fuel, fuel, fuel kicks our butt. And, you know, we, we saw what happened, I don't know, that's maybe six, 12 months from uh, ago that we saw the, those fuel prices skyrocket. You know, we're lucky to capture a three to six percent increase year over year. And so when our fuel goes up 25, 35 percent, uh, it's that's game over, you know, and, and we don't want to have to go to our customers and, and try to do fuel surcharges and have those discussions and go out to bid and and cause all the, the headaches to go with that. Um, the, the other piece of that is is um, uh, fuel. Can I stop you right there? Yeah, yeah. Because one of the things that you just said sparked a, a, a question <laughs> for me. Uh, the the smart controllers uh, have an alerting function, right? So um, I want to hear how you are using that alerting function not to eliminate site truck rolls, but how to uh, prioritize, like to 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 know when to send that person out, to know when to pull the trigger. Do, are you using alerting for that, or are you using other tools? Are you saying in terms of like the electronic and hydraulic alerts of the controller? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. I mean, the, the, the beauty of that um, 
is, is it justifies a work order. You know, there, there's nothing easier for me uh, to submit a, a bill to my customer and to justify a, a truck delivery or truck um, rollout um, if I have if I have a generated alarm, you know, a mainline break, a leak detection, a, a no connect. Uh, we obviously one of the, the bigger kickers that we've had to figure out over the years, and this goes across all manufacturers, is, is false positives. Right, that that kicks our butt. So there's there's things that we have set up. Um, I'll give Gary Collins a shout out. One of the things that he does that's pretty neat uh, is he, he makes the alert generate twice, and so he clears the alert. He makes it you know regenerate whether it's flow or, or hydraulic, uh, and and if it regenerates, and he knows it, it's it's um it's it's valid. So, you know, making sure that we have all of those, um, you know, but the alerts tell us where we need to go, you know, and that's the biggest thing is that if I have a system that's really dialed in, my, my weather-based programming is dialed in, my, my electronics are good, my splices are good, um, my, my, my flow sensor is working, I don't have to do a quarterly PMI, I don't have to do twice a year PMI, and, and mind you, I'm, I'm California, I'm special, I irrigate 11 months out of the year, um, but, you know, I, I can keep things operating, and I don't have to do just a, hey, let's turn things on because because we feel like it. It's a, you know, controller three, station 11, you have a problem there. And I don't have to go look at station 10. I don't have to look at station 12. I'm honing in right to the problem, identifying it, fixing it, and moving on. One of our smart water principles that we train on in our training is uh, the advantage of the information that smart controllers provide, right? The, the principle we focus on is getting the right information to the right person at the right time to make good, accurate, and timely decisions. And that to, sounds to me like what you're touching on, right? It, you get the, the alert information and, and you can expedite a response and minimize the damage and loss that comes from it. Absolutely. The, the one big win, um, let's call this a hydro point win. I don't know how many others are really dialed in in this circumstance, but the, the managed subscription, the, the alert report function where I can drop, I can you know basically create a subscription where I have all the alerts uh, from a collective amount of controllers be generated and dropped into certain inboxes automatically. So every morning, 7 a.m., I have an account manager and his two irrigation technicians get a full roll up of all the alerts that were generated that morning. So like you mentioned, is taking that information, accurate, detailed information, getting to the right people as efficiently as possible, uh, it, it makes for a very streamlined um, operation. I agree. So um, Danny, if you don't mind, I'm gonna check with Robert. Uh, it looks like we have a few questions that have come in. I think it's a good time to take a breath and, and see what questions we have. Robert? Let's take a look here. Um, Nothing related to the presentation so far. Um, ben, I think a few are saying that your um, sound is going in and out. Oh, okay. turn that Wi-Fi off. Outside of that, I think we're good to move forward. No questions uh, just yet. Okay, I will fix that. Danny, uh, one of the things that we talked about is the uh, remote rain pause and turning controllers on and off. Can you talk about that while I fix this audio issue? Absolutely. That that's that's a huge piece on the on the truck rollout. Uh, we unfortunately, Southern California, California, and elsewhere, of course, uh, we don't always get the big category three plus storms where it's where it's being talked about by Dallas rains at six p.m. Right. We, we have these, these small cells that come through, could be you know a, a, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch of, of, of moisture. Um, and, and what gets difficult for us is that we know it's not effective irrigation. We know it may drop the ET, that's fine, we're okay with that, but we know it's not that, that amount of moisture is not gonna be impactful or, or effective for our irrigation. Yet our beloved customers go, it's a smart controller. You know, I, I spent great money on this controller. I'm spending thousands of dollars uh, invested in the system. I'm driving through, there's a light drizzle and the irrigation turned on, you know, what the heck. Um, I get called into more board meetings in those type of situations than, than any other. It's why did the technology not do its job? And, and really what it is, is 
us having having a better understanding. Horticulturally speaking, we know that storm's not going to produce. We're going to let it slide. So what we have to do is we have to turn the controllers off, essentially override them to do a 24-hour rain pause, a two-day rain pause, or what have you. Um, but it's below the horticultural uh, threshold, and it's but it's above the the public perception. And so now we have to turn these controllers off, let them breathe for a day. Don't don't allow it to irrigate. Uh, and having to do that, you know, turn off 40 offline controllers or 100 offline controllers. You know, in my case, I'm over 4,000 controllers um, that I oversee. Um, with roughly 2,000 of them online. So if I can have more controllers online and I can turn off big batches of controllers, that's going to obviously reduce truck rolls, reduce labor to do basically a non-billable task and keeps us moving forward. Okay, hopefully you can hear me better now. Does that sound right, Danny? Yep, you're good. I think you were just kind of volume was kind of uh, dissipating a little bit, but you're good. Okay, you're good. Uh, let me know. Keep an eye on that for me. Uh, one of the stories that I have about uh, that rain pause comes from a big military base that I work with in Colorado. They actually put pen to paper on this and I think it provides a great example. So when before smart controllers, when it rained on that post, they would send out all four of their irrigation techs to turn all of those controllers off. And then when the rain event had finished, they sent out all four of their techs to go turn all of those controllers mm -hmm. back on. And uh, they would count on any rain event costing them 40 man hours of time spent sure. going out, turning those controllers off and coming back and turning them back on. Now with their smart controller deployment, uh, they can go in, they have, I want to say somewhere above 150 controllers on that post. Mm -hmm. And they can, with a single... Uh, Three button push the switch, right? yeah, stroke yeah, of the yeah. pen, turn off all 150 plus controllers, uh, and and not miss a beat. Right, the commanding officer never sees the irrigation watering in the rain, and it saves them 40 man hours every time that that happens. So again, this Very whole measurable. conversation is about time savings. Right, how do I become more efficient? And that really is a, a great example of how that happens. I like it. Okay. So, and then the thing that I have next is uh, for you, this is definitely all in your court because I want to talk about profitability, how this time is money concept really plays out and turns out in profitability for Park West or for the contractors out there. Yeah, well, there's obviously the, the the sale, the point of sale, right? So, you know, we we just like in any other spray head, rotor, um, slip by slip, coupling, we're we're putting a markup on it. And you know, gross margin dollars are a big deal for the company. You know, everyone has expectations on what to uh, to, to produce in terms of you know what we call as extras. Uh, but that's you know that obviously moves moves the dial in terms of where the company is growing. So. You know, with our core business, we're, we're about 95, 93% HOA, mixing in some hospitality and commercial. Um, but it's a very big deal for us to, to make sure that we're repairing the HOA's irrigation systems as, as efficiently as possible. If you look at an HOA, their number one variable cost uh, for them is water. Uh, second is landscape. Third is typically roofs or slurry seal. So if I can help them reduce their water consumption, then obviously where can they spend more money? They can then spend more money on upgrading the irrigation system. And with so many improvements that we need to be making between check valves, pressure regulation, flow sensing, weather-based irrigation controllers, um, we're having a lot of fun doing that. And so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not taking the, the big diesel truck away and, and, and selling everyone a Prius. We're, we're not quite doing that. Um, but if I'm able to take their, their annual water footprint, their annual water costs, determine that horticulturally speaking, that there sh they should be at $80,000 a year instead of 100,000, I know that I can put $20,000 into their irrigation systems and, and have that ROI produced for them. So um, it's not just always a, a profitability for me, it's looking at the big picture, client wins, I win, and it's a great deal all around. So what I wanna know about is, uh, does adding these smart controllers add to your customer retention or customer satisfaction? Do you see any direct correlation between the, the customers that you help manage smart controllers versus the customers that you manage without them? 
Yeah, yeah, and, and there's two sides of that. Um, there's the be better than your competitor. You know, there, there's always that, right? Um, I, we've we've built a reputation on actually knowing how to run this equipment. Uh, we have the certifications to prove it. We were Hydropoint University certified, which you know that's something that for the note takers in the class, uh, take a look. Great stuff, online training. Um, but you know, it, it's it's a twofold. It's it's knowing how to run this equipment. My customers are going to want to keep me. I'm showing water savings, I'm showing value. It's really hard to get rid of me in that capacity, right? It's, it's one thing, hey, I'm gonna mow your lawn, I'm gonna trim your bushes. There's a lot of landscape companies that can do that. Um, but we've been asked, the industry has been asked to do a heck of a lot more than that. Not only water conservation, plant health, um, managing you know, bark beetles. I mean, it, we're, we're going so much further ahead in, in this industry than where we were you know, even five, 10 years ago. And I, I love that. Um, I, I think that Park West is a shining example of that. Now, I know that not all companies are as big or as uh, focused on smart water management as, as Park West, but your position specifically centers around that water consumption and that movement toward technology and, and solution for uh, what, where water is scarce. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit about how your how Park West is providing that, that as a service, how they're kind of billing that to their customers as a value that is a differentiator? Absolutely. I mean, I, uh, I've i been fortunate to be in a position where I've created two new roles within the company. We have the irrigation specialist and the water manager. They're not always billable. We, we were never intending for them to actually be not, not quite not a profit center, um, but they were to support the irrigation technicians who are absolutely a profit center for us. Uh, what we have found is smart controllers, water conservation, smart technologies, irrigation technologies are, are coming. Architects are specking them, manufacturers are making them. The cost of water continues to increase well above CPI, even inflation. It's, it's just skyrocketing. From coast to coast, not From just coast in to California, coast, absolutely drought, no that drought. Is true. you know, hey, California droughts over, can't wait to see the reduction in my water price, right? That, that ain't happening. Yeah. Um, and, and so what do we create? We created a problem and there's two ways to go about it, either run towards it or run away from it. And so um, I, I need to make sure I have the staff that knows how to run this equipment. I, I can be hired on a job tomorrow. Uh, with the 100 smart controllers. And it could be a, a system that I'm not quite familiar with. And I have to go, okay, well, I have my irrigation specialists, my water managers, uh, my irrigation technicians, what training's available? How can I get them trained up? How can they operate this as efficiently as possible uh, and, and, and do good by the customer? That is awesome. So one of the, uh, one of the things that we were gonna talk about is what are the customers focused on that is that differentiator? but I do want to take a break and, and check with Robert, make sure that there aren't questions. Robert, how are we doing on questions? Looks like we have two that we can take care of now. So okay. our friend Hassan asks, did your company save 40,000 in a year? Can you explain more, please? That was the school district. That was the school district, right? And, and what they did was they documented all of their truck rolls before they added their smart controllers and documented all of their truck rolls after their smart controllers and assigned a hundred dollar value to each truck roll and <clears throat> identified that using smart controllers reduced uh, their number of truck rolls to those sites by more than forty thousand dollars very good thank you ben hopefully we answered your question Hassan. uh our friend edwin asks can you guys clear the difference between rain pause and weather track rain pause? I can. Please, I'll, I'll take the more uh, user manual uh, answer got there. <laughs> so for this one, I think that's a product specialist question. Uh, I will step you, right you up did the, you, you did your glasses, that's fine. I'm a nerd, this is a weather track nerd question. Uh, there are three different kinds of pause with weather track. Uh, first, we add a rain sensor, remember that uh, weather track is a once a day weather update. It is not streaming weather data. So the controller will be able to say it has rained. It will never be able to say it is raining. So we add a rain sensor to make sure that we're not caught watering in the rain because that is an eyesore. Just so you know, if you do water in the rain, weather track tracks how much rain you received and the schedule will respond. So uh, it 
it is more of an eyesore than it is really a, a water issue, but still we don't want the complaints. The second kind of pause that we have is a weather track climate center rain pause. So through our weather information, uh, if your square kilometer, right, if your micro zone receives enough usable rainfall that we can safely turn your controller off to make use of that rain, we will do that, right? So if you receive enough rain where we can turn that guy off for from two to 14 days, to make use of that good rainwater uh, and not add irrigation water on top of rainwater, uh, then we're going to do that. And that results in huge water savings, right? We, we uh, let the plants use that rain. And then finally, we have what we call a user rain pause, which I think is what the question really is centered around. Um, as a manager, I have access from my WeatherTrack mobile from the controller itself or from WeatherTrack Central to in real time go out and implement a user rain pause saying I, the manager, want to shut down irrigation and provide a countdown uh, to, to when it will turn back on. So if I see rain in the forecast, remember WeatherTrack is only going to report and, and uh, deal with weather that has already happened. So as a manager, if I see that it's going to rain the next three days, I can proactively turn off all of my controllers. Again, one foul swoop, I can go in and turn those all off very quickly and easily and not wait for weather track to get the rain signal that will uh, turn those those scheduled irrigation events off. Danny, did, did yeah, I and, and I, I want to add to that point because that's there, there's two things that you said there that are just absolutely vital. Uh, one, we should not be rain pausing the, the day of or the day prior of the rainfall event uh, of a substantial rainfall event. Uh, we, we need we need somewhere for that water, the irrigation, or the, the the rainfall to go. And so, if we can pause and, and disrupt the irrigation three four days prior, allow ET to continue to accrue, give us a nice you know say half inch of acceptable water, not 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 soil, but half inch of water. Uh, depending on the storm, how the storm comes in, the overall volume of the storm, uh, give 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 the uh, the storm somewhere to put that water. You know, and that that's that's really huge for us. Mm -hmm. The other piece, and, and I didn't really think about this, Ben, when we were kind of building up all these these you know profitability pieces. Um, is, is how your countdown does count down and I don't have to go turn it back on. And so, you know, we talk about your, your, your guys who are spending 40 hours turning it off, turning it back on. Well, if I can just go, hey, rain pause seven days, what's going to happen in seven days? It's going to turn on for me. So I don't have to dispatch another 40 hours. I don't have to dispatch. I, I can even actually forget about it, right? And that person or that landscape is going to respond, go right back to where it was and, and, and continue to march it along. Absolutely. Robert, do you think that answered those questions? I, I think you answered those perfectly. Um, I think we're good to move on. I have another, but I think it, it can be saved for later in the presentation. Fantastic. So what I want to focus on uh, is the, the result with your customers, not for uh, Park West and the response teams, but does smart irrigation uh, play out with your customers? Does it make them happy? Do you see any any evidence of that, Danny? Absolutely. You know, it, it goes back to the, the, their cost of water, their their biggest variable expense. And, and again, I, I kind of picked on the, the condos, but it really is for single family HOAs, uh, the commercial, you know, the the Carl's Jr., the commercial lot, the the hotel, the hospitality uh, locations. Um, everyone is having to pay very expensive uh, water rates, right? And, and we're, you know, looking at not just the the unit rate, which has flirted anywhere between a buck fifty all the way up to seven eight dollars fixed, uh, but now we have tiered rate structures. Especially, you know, what I thought was a West Coast thing has really kind of gravitated. I know it's in your world now, Ben, in Colorado. Um, Florida, I believe, is getting there. And, and if anybody who doesn't know tiered rate structure, it kind of works. Um, I used to use the, the cell phone bill analogy when your daughter, you know, racks up a thousand dollar cell phone bill because of the data. Um, but now everyone has unlimited plans. So that's kind of a tough one to use. Um, but how about, uh, you know, how, however much water I use, the more water I use, I have different levels of a bucket. So I have different, I have an allocation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I, uh, if I'm allowed to use, you know, call it a hundred gallons, and I use I use 120 gallons. The first 100 gallons is going to be at two bucks. Any remaining after that might be two or three dollars more um, for for that same uh, 
same volume of water. And so that can really damage an HOA or really any property's budget uh, drastically. And, and it's, you know, most of these tiered rate structures, they, they used to have them based on like historical averages, three-year rolling averages. Um, but we really proved that wasn't uh, fair or legal, in, in my honest opinion, um, just because of, uh, you know, we have we have years of drought, we have years of excessive rainfall, as, as we've just seen, uh, and trying to get a three-year average is, is just not fair, you know, good, good or bad. So the new tiered rate formulas, they're getting pretty fancy, um, you know, they're using evapotranspiration, uh, irrigation efficiencies, plant factors, all those, all those fun attributes, um, which mirror pretty pretty close to your, uh, your schedule now algorithm you know so if i can line those up and, and have you know the, the the programming obviously the programming needs to match what's in the field but if i can have that line up and, and get close to my my allocation you know right near or close to it um i'm staying under the water budget i'm, I'm saving the customer water uh, and i'm not underwatering uh, my property because that that's the that's the flip side you know we always talk about uh, overwatering, but I've, I've found properties with, with amazing uh, smart controllers on them, and, and they're underwatering to the, to the detriment of the plant material. We're creating hard pan situations where we have uh, leaching problems with recycled water uh, because they, they decide to turn water off for three months. You know, we, we have a challenge right now that I, I, I think it's the first time that I've, I've seen in, the, in, in such a large capacity, um, but we've had the rain, you know, the, the irrigation off for the better part of two and a half, three months in, in uh, the majority of Southern California, uh, and we've had recycled water sitting in these pipes. And so we have had all this recycled water stay stagnant uh, against our, our check valves, against our, our valves. Um, we go to turn these systems on and, and, oh, wow, we didn't really think that through, did we? And, and no, I'm not buying trailers and I'm not winterizing, you know, winterizing and blowing air, air, you know, compressed air out on my systems like, uh, you know, the, the areas that need to do that, like you. I'm not, I'm not going down that road. Um, but I thought to myself, I'm like, you know, we, we should have done a, a couple of minute burst test, you know, once a month, like every couple of weeks, you know, and, and through, through these periods of times keep the diaphragms moisture, um, you know, all the, all the, the gears and stuff inside of our, 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 you know, MP rotator nozzles, what have you, um, you know, they, they, they need lubrication and, you know, that's a very interesting, well, MP rotator, I don't think does, um, but, you know, th our systems need to, 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 to continue to move in, in some capacities or else we run into problems. Yeah. And there were, there were a couple of things I wanted to, to build on there. Uh, if we get back to tiered water rate structure, I have a story about that. But oh boy. Uh, what I really want to focus on, what you just said is uh, with smart controllers, I see a definite difference in the landscape because we're applying that math and science every time, right? We are delivering the right amount of water that that plant needs to grow deep and in frequent watering, you get those deep roots, right? And good uh, plant growth, healthy plant growth, and a beautiful landscape as a result. So often the smart controller conversation is about uh, kind of eliminating the water waste and, and the scheduling advantage. We talk about the water bill, but we don't talk about the landscape and how lush and beautiful we can expect it to be when this science is applied. Deep roots, that, that's the biggest thing. You know, we, we, we talk uh, internally, we call it drought proofing the landscape, you know, and, and ultimately, you know, when, when do we do that? We can't do that really in the droughts, right? Because we have water restrictions. When we need to be doing that is, is during actual good times of years, um, your springs, your falls, where we can kind of stress respectfully and quote of course, um, stress the landscape, get, get the, the plants to work for themselves and, and dig deeper root systems. Um, but then if we don't, you know, I've seen this happen where we may put turf, we know turf is at a, a three inch root depth, the programming is working. Well, over so many periods of times, let's try to push it to four inches, then push it to five inches, push it to six inches. And, and what are we doing? We're, we're telling the roots, you know, hey, we're not going to baby you anymore. We're not going to keep giving you the moisture at the first inch of soil. Um, you know where to go. You know, you've been doing this longer than we have. Go go find the water. And uh, if we can do that, then when these drought restrictions do come in two days a week, three days a week, um, you know, come in, our landscape is ready. And that's what our friend Tony Monzon is you all name drop. I was going to name drop right? her, but I was going to figure you were too. Yeah, absolutely. Tony. Like uh, when when talking about the the application, making a healthier plant, uh, and and building that ecosystem below, uh, that really uh, it, it reminded me of the time I've spent with Tony. So shout out to Tony Monzon. 
bilingual. Yeah, that, that graphic that you guys have is, is pretty darn neat. Yeah. So Robert, I'm going to come back to you. I know that uh, I, we've got a couple more segments we want to cover, but let's check in with questions. Very good. So should we use solar sensors with controllers? Solar sensor, Danny, do you know what they're talking about? Well, we're either, are we talking solar radiation as it relates to part of the, the ET calculation, or are we looking at solar in terms of solar powered? Good question. Uh, Hassan, if you could clear that up, I'll go to your next question. Um, Hassan also asks, can we reduce our water consumption a little more? I have an opinion about that. Can I, can I start, Danny? Absolutely. Okay. So one of the advantages of the, the smart control system, and I speak specifically of WeatherTrack, is the ability to uh, see the data and make good water management decisions around that. So we have a great report that estimates usage by station. And while smart controllers are a great way of saving water, it is not the only way to save water. There are a lot of solutions that we see in play. Uh, turf reduction, smart equipment out in the field, high efficiency spray heads, for example, right? Um, these are all things that once you have a smart controller, you can go station by station and figure out which ones are your worst offenders and how to kind of squeeze those ones, make different landscape choices, make different management choices, whatever it may be, to uh, continue to save more and more. Remember, there is an amount of water that those plants need to stay healthy. So at some point, we're, we're compromising the landscape and we don't want to do that intentionally. Like sometimes you have to because of water restrictions, but uh, <clears throat> what I focus on is a healthy landscape and getting every station the right amount of water, but controlling either the distribution or the need on those stations to further reduce uh, the water that we're using. Danny, does that sound right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think I pen marked this, but I don't know where I heard it from. Uh, you can't put a smart control on a dump system. So we have to make sure the distribution system is relatively ready for, for the smart controller. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a, a, an older property. I see a rat nest of, of low voltage and we go, let's just wire it all up to the smart controller. So we wire it up. You know, we hope that the white is the <laughs> common, right? More times than not, it is. Um, we hit that raster test, right? And we go, let's see, uh, let's, let's see what happens. And, uh, you know, we start finding, oh, that's uh, that's battery operate over there. Oh, that's a add a zone over there. And, you know, what the heck is this doubler doing over here? And, you know, and, and it just exposes all of that. So there, there's definitely some vetting we need to do before we you know, slam in that that smart controller. Um, but as Ben as Ben mentioned, that the tool that we have now is is I'm able to connect the smart controller, uh, do the raster test. Now I can have you know through my app I can turn stations on. I can start going through the system properly and, and, and improving on it. And I would say with the with regard to the IA that that certified irrigation auditor class mm -hmm. will teach you that a nice even blanket of water is the best defense against overwatering right your yep. distribution uniformity and being able to eliminate water waste inside of that zone is a, a paramount way of saving water right because at that point we don't overwater any one section we've got a nice uh, even blanket, and we don't have to overwater one side to get the other side fully hydrated. So, well, and and that's what's so nice about actually, ident you know, identifying and utilizing DU because DU does not equal irrigation efficiency. You know, and that and that's that's something that people really don't understand. You know, how those two uh, impact and how they correlate with each other. Uh, the other piece, and I try to explain this in terms of. Uh, sometimes our, 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 our return on investments is we have the irrigation efficiency, then we also have the irrigation management efficiency, which is you're judging me. You're judging me on how well I do my job. Uh, that's the biggest piece. You can give me a Ferrari and I can still have the worst lap time, you know, versus a, a, a go-kart, right? And so we need to make sure that the technologies are there, but then we need to make sure that the people know what they're doing with those technologies. Absolutely. Robert, does that sound like we covered that topic for you? Yep, very good, gentlemen. I think we're good to move on. Okay. okay. Do you want to do you want to come back with? Do we hear about solar radiation? Do you want uh, so to? So Hassan just answered. He says, "I mean sensors that can calculate evo 
Um, evapotranspiration. Evapotranspiration. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, go ahead, Danny. I'm spoiled. I, I I got good data. I mean, I know I know your 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 system, and we'll talk about that. But I, I have SIMA stations that are are you know pretty powerful. They work well, um, so I can I'm able to pull ETOs off of those. Um, and there's a few other sources that we've looked at, but I know you know Ben's technology, which I know he's getting very giddy to talk about, um, is, is pretty powerful, pretty accurate. I think what uh, one kilometer, uh, so no point six. Point six yeah, yeah. What, what was it? One kilometer, point six miles. Bolt. Bolt there you of those go. Well, sure. Yeah, it's a conversion factor. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Good stuff. So I would I would caution you uh, that not all ET is built equally. So mm -hmm. there are multiple ways to calculate ET, and you have to be aware of the ET that you're using and what what it involves. So with Hydropoint, we use what we call the Penman Monteith which is the way that we use, uh, the way that we calculate ET using temperature, solar radiation, humidity, and wind information. And um, that to us is the gold standard of the ET calculation. If you are using something that is solar radiation based, it might be using a different formula that does not include all of those factors, right? So on days where solar radiation is the dominant feature, those solar radiation systems are great, but in an area that wind is the dominant factor, they're gonna miss that key element. So you just have to be aware of the, the technology that you're using and, um, and kind of compensate in, in the right direction. Is that fair? <laughs> Yeah, and the biggest thing is is ET. You know, obviously, if it's bad, it's going to stay bad. If it's good, it's going to stay good. But it's a reference. You know, you have to look at your landscape. You have to see what your landscape is doing and how it's responding to it. You know, the reason why you can put in all these attributes and you can try to you know nail down that station to exactly what you think it is, but we still have a percentage just on the back end of it is because there, there's always going to be factors that we have to consider. Um, there's going to be a, a glass mirror that that shines on certain times of the month on that turf that just absolutely scorches the turf. There's no amount of, of accurate ET information that's going to help you understand that. And so there's all these site conditions. We've had you know rather large HOAs that can have completely different types of soil profiles when even at the you know at the six inch mark. We have to we have to you know take those into consideration and see how our landscapes are doing and then adjust the irrigation accordingly. Does, it, does that sound right, Robert? That works. Thank you, gentlemen. On you to the next. Great question. Lots of opinions on that. <laughs> um, the Denny, the one thing I wanted to have you comment on, um, and because it is with our technology, I consider the the biggest breakthrough we've had in a long time is the mapping. Mm -hmm. uh, and the efficiency gains that come from mapping a site uh, with WeatherTrack, you can do it inside the technology, but uh, with other technologies, the maps need be made, right? You absolutely, <laughs> mapping should be fundamental in my water management opinion. Can you talk about your process of, of using maps with and without WeatherTrack? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we have... Uh there's two different types of maps before we've gone online with it. There is uh, the controller and meter coverage map, uh, how they correlate with each other. This controller operates this meter, it serves this large area. It could be a, a, a tracked area of homes, for example, or you know the, the, the Walmart, right? Uh, the other type of maps that we can create uh, through our graphics department, through colored pencils on a clipboard, um, is our station by station mapping. So what does this area cover? What does you know, station 11 do? Where is station 12? Uh, why do we identify all of this? Is just to speed up our work orders, speed up our repairs, speed up our efficiencies. Where you guys have taken it um, is by able to, you know, assetize and, and map all, everything that we have on the on the property. It's able to to document things. So we've had concerns where, hey, these valves are coming up short; they're not hitting their um, useful life, or do we have a problem over here? Why do I keep repairing this main line in the same area year, uh, week week over week? Um, but being able to, to not only just locate all of our equipment, you know, for the irrigator that's there at 3 a.m. trying to turn something off, 
Um, but just really identifying where it is and, and, and manage it better. You know, we have done heat maps now where, um, hey, we've replaced the same, you know, the same T on this main line or the same section of this area three or four times over. Um, are we exceeding pipe velocity? Is there too high of a dynamic or static pressure? Um, do we have air in the line? You know, and so we're able to identify hydraulics and electronic concerns much more efficiently the more that we've been able to map things out. Um, the unfortunate thing is that we're still trying to figure out how much of this should be done at the new construction point versus, and, and say, new, new controller installation or throughout the course of, of the uh, programming efforts. Um, for example, we don't do programming worksheets anymore. You know, we're, we're programming right there through the app as we move along through the station. We're doing the programming, we're doing the mapping, and we're doing the PMI all in one go. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal your screen there for a minute. Uh, but what I wanted to show was the what it looks like inside of WeatherTrack. So Danny talked about Google Maps and line maps and pencil drawings. What WeatherTrack has done recently is gone to adding this into the cloud-based information. So if I share my screen, I already ruined the surprise. But with this, um, through WeatherTrack Mobile, this is the same page where I go and I can run stations manually using my phone as a remote control. And if I go to the map feature up in the top, it takes me to that site and you'll be able to see yourself in the map. And the way that this uh, pays dividends in terms of time savings is undefinable. Like there's so many different stories on how you can make this happen, but um, you see yourself in the map, you see where all of the assets that you manage are in proximity to your physical location. And then you can go in and take pictures and, and show that information off, um, as well as this button right here, this circle button. If I'm looking for this valve, uh, if I'm sending a tech out to look for that valve, if I push that button, it will drop that pin into the map and give you turn-by-turn -turn directions to go and find that. Shush. It will uh, give you turn by turn directions to find that location. So again, like if you're the irrigation tech on call uh, and you're going to a site that your company manages, but you're not familiar with uh, finding that backflow, finding that controller, um, th that can be hours just spent with, if you're unlucky on the weekend in uh -huh. the dark, it can take you forever. And you're the guy sketchy walking around bushes with a flashlight looking for the irrigation controller. Uh, these mapping tools really can help uh, minimize the amount of time it takes to find and manage the components that you're looking for. Okay, so now we are definitely running short on time. Robert, we talked about uh, leaving some time at the end for questions, but we have absolutely tried to keep up with that. How are we doing on time? And do we have any questions to follow up on? We have about five, well, actually, we have about eight minutes left for you to work with. And okay. I if we have a few more questions, let me double check. Do that. So, Danny, if DU doesn't mean irrigation efficiency, does match precipitation mean or equal irrigation efficiency? Oh, that's a that's a fun one. All right, let me process that for a minute. If DU yeah, doesn't mean question. irrigation efficiency, Who does, does match precipitation that? mean equal irrigation efficiencies? Wowzers. Okay. So what is DU? DU is, is like Ben mentioned, it's a good analogy is the blanket, right? We want an evil, even blanket of water. And so um, making sure that obviously we have mass precipitation rate uh, nozzles are accurate. Um, you know, whether the system, let's, let's say slope rotors. So are, are we having the fulls on one valve and, the, and the, the top and bottom halves on the same? Are we nozzling them out accordingly so we can have all of them fire off on the same valve and still be able to provide equal run times? Um, that's, that's the piece. Now the irrigation efficiency, I would argue is more about, um, you know, overall ability to, to perform. So uh, pressure regulation, check valves, how, how often does it get out of uh, rotation? How often, you know, what happens if I give the rotor, the manufacturer may say, don't give this nozzle more than 80 PSI, you know, give, don't give the rotor more than 80 PSI, um, even with the pressure regulation. So how well does the, the system perform in the tough situations that it's in? Um, after that, that squirrel goes and just eats the heck out of that rotor nozzle, how well does that thing perform after the fact? So I, I would argue that they, um, 
mass precipitation rate is more about the hardware um, as it is in, you know, call it your, your laboratory circumstances. And then there's the real world that we live in and, and all of the fun that we get to play with. Thank you, Danny. I think that answers the question. And it doesn't look like we have anything else here just yet. I'll give people a moment. I'll, I'll answer uh, from, from Matt. I, I don't mind answering that. Um, the, the two options that you mentioned, uh, Matt, I, I, I believe the answer is no. Uh, I would advise, um, I'm trying not to be biased here, uh, Wait, Google. Read, would you read the question? <laughs> what, what did Matt ask? Uh, where, where can Matt buy uh, HydroPoint? Oh, uh, we have a preferred distributor network through, uh, <clears throat> it, it depends on your location, right? Uh, most distributors have access to it, but in every market, we have a preferred distributor, and I would be happy to connect you to the salesman in your neck of the woods. Good answer. Thanks. Excellent. And I know Matthew would like to connect with you after the presentation, so I'll share his information. I appreciate that. Okay. Let's see. Well, it looks like... We don't have any other questions. Matt, Matt is thank you. Matt says thank you for the answer. Much appreciated. Is there are there any additional points you two would like to make before we close out? Um, I think on my part, I would just like to give a tout to the upcoming Smart Irrigation Month through the IEA. Uh, HydroPoint is the sponsor of Smart Irrigation Month, so we will be hitting your social media as often as we can to promote not only smart controllers, but uh, all of the practice of smart irrigation and everything that goes into it. And we recognize that while we uh, create a piece of that puzzle, it is Danny Smith and the folks out in the field that are delivering smart irrigation through practice every day. And so I'll, I'll bounce that over to Danny. I just wanted to give a shout out to the Smart Irrigation Month. Here it comes and a great opportunity to talk to your customers about that. It's a big deal. There's a lot of, I know um, Irrigation Association does a great job uh, promoting it. There's a lot of resources on the IA um, to, to get that to get that out there. Uh, one takeaway that I, I would suggest, you know, it, it, it took a lot to become a believer for smart, for smart controllers, for algorithms, for scheduling algorithms, you know, trusting the controller, uh, letting it do its thing. You know, it took, it took some convincing on, on my end, you know, seven, eight years ago. And, and I knew it was a win. I knew it was the right way to go about irrigation programming when, when my, when my team believed it. So, you know, I, I had my biasness, I overcame my own, but then when I, when I was able to educate others, on it and and take them from you know their 20 years of experience doing what they were doing uh to now really programming these things and, and understanding soil types and crop coefficients and irrigation efficiencies and looking in the catalog for the precip rate and if it's triangle spacing or square spacing uh getting getting these guys to go wow you know i didn't have to go back out next week and, and change the programming and you know i just put it last week for monday wednesday friday and this week only watered monday and tuesday and why, why did it do that and you know, but the technology is here, you know, and so I, I, I highly suggest do your research, train, educate yourself. I appreciate all of you coming in today um, to, to learn a little bit more about smart controllers, uh, but this is the future. Uh, I'm excited to be a part of it, and we're having a great time. And I think that to close out, uh, I, I would just summarize by saying uh, back to the heart of the conversation, um, what we see when we add smart controllers is uh, promotion of the level of contractor that is providing that service. And once you're comfortable with it, once you've vetted it out and started using it, we do see the result being increased profits and increased efficiency, right? Through time savings, through that time is money philosophy, we are able to provide a better service uh, in less time and make more money doing it. So it can be a valuable business proposition that increases customer retention, increases landscape health, and inevitably reduces the water bill as well. So- Great uh, way to bring it back, look at you. See, so we tie it all together and then we'll bounce it back to Robert to have his closing thoughts. Excellent point to end on, gentlemen. Well, everyone, it looks like we're out of time. Thank you for attending and please don't forget to check our website for upcoming webinars throughout the year. A big thanks to Ben and Danny for sharing their knowledge with us today and to HydroPoint Data Systems for sponsoring the webinar. 
If you have any questions that we didn't answer, please feel free to email them to education at irrigation.org. We'll pass them on to the appropriate team member. This concludes our webinar. Thank you again, thank you again gentlemen, and have a great day, everyone. It's been great working yeah. with you. Thanks, everyone.